Okay, the web dev world just got another huge security incident. We have major issues popping up every other week now, so soon enough, this channel will only exist to document the slow motion collapse of modern web development. This time around, it's React server components, and it is really bad because it allows unauthenticated remote code execution by exploiting a flaw in how React decodes payloads sent to React server function endpoints. In other words, any malicious user could easily send commands to Node.js and those commands will be immediately executed on the server. But how did we get here? Well, we need a 30 seconds front-end history tour for this one, and while most of you might be familiar with the concepts, it's never a bad idea to revisit a chain of bad ideas which led us to this mess. In the good old days, building for the web was really easy. The server was in charge of your data, your business logic, and your HTML rendering. The browser was simply displaying that HTML and loading some CSS scripts for interactivity. Then, in the single-page application era, for reasons that boil down mostly to boredom and hype, we decided to move part of the business logic and the entire HTML rendering on the front end. This led to large chunks of data being moved over the wire and browsers displaying blank screens for seconds while JavaScript booted everything up in the background. And this brings us to the present day when we know that client-side rendering is not a good experience, so the business logic and part of rendering is going back on the server. There are various architectures and ideas when it comes to what content is rendered where, and among the many ideas, React Server Components is probably the worst of them. And always remember, they are brought to you by Vercel. Now, to be fair, the past 20 years of JavaScript fatigue is purely an artificial problem, and PHP, or Ruby developers, who we used to mock in the past, were the ones actually laughing on the sidelines. So, with Server Components brought to you by Vercel, your application is split into components, and each individual component can be rendered either on the client or on the server. You do this by adding a special directive at the top of your component file, and components marked to run on the server can fetch data, run backend logic, or perform any server-only tasks. The server components never get sent to the browser as code. They're rendered on the server into a serialized format, which is basically a custom payload that the client can understand, and then the client stitches them into the rest of the app. This format used to serialize components is called the flight protocol, and this is where the vulnerability occurred. Reminder, yes, while we are still talking about rendering elements on a web page, we are talking about architectures, server, clients, protocols, execution boundaries, and remote procedure calls. If this isn't a red flag, I don't know what is. So flight is a custom serialization protocol that encodes the result of rendering server components into a lightweight stream of data, which is then sent to the client. On the client, the React runtime parses this flight payload and reconstructs the React component tree using the output of the server-rendered components. And the key to this whole incident is the word serialization. If you have some basic security knowledge, you probably know that deserialization is one of the most dangerous operations you can perform, especially when it involves untrusted input. That's exactly what happened in this situation. This gentleman right here, whose name I'm afraid to attempt to pronounce, provided a detailed explanation of the exploit. In short, the client was passing data to the server in serialized chunks. Each chunk can reference another chunk using these dollar prefixed pointers, so the server reconstructs a final object by walking those references. The problem starts when React resolves those references. Since React never verified whether the property being accessed actually existed on the target, you could reach straight into Proto, then into the constructor chain to finally get to the JavaScript function constructor itself. From there, things get ugly fast. By carefully crafting the chunk graph, you can return an object with a fake then property. If the returned value exposes a then method, JavaScript calls it. Then, after some clever abuse of how React revives these chunks during deserialization, that fake then method gets executed automatically by the runtime. Now, granted, this is pretty involved and a bit difficult to follow in a 4 minute video, but the problem still remains. How come we decided React server components brought to you by Vercel are a good idea, and how did we get to the point where building a simple web page allows attackers full access to your backend server? The security fix is, of course, simple. You just have to upgrade or downgrade from the affected versions. However, we have a huge problem in web development. Smart people manage to come up with simple solutions for difficult problems, and dumb people do the opposite. Before wrapping things up, let me tell you a few words about today's sponsor, Vercel. <laughs> <laughs> we have to admit, that would have been pretty funny. Please don't forget to violently smash all the buttons on the screen, and until next time, thank you for watching.